Good evening, I'm Meryl Friend and welcome to News Geelong on this cold winter Wednesday the 28th of July. Local theatre and sporting communities should take note of a new state-of-the-art complex housed at Cadinia International College, but accessible to hire for everybody. The new $8 million Katsumata Centre was opened last week. In the world of sport, Nathan Curry brings us words from a happy senior coach, Mark Bomber Thompson, after a fantastic weekend for the Cats, and a racing report from John Dunn. And from the weather world, Lani Salathiel updates us with the latest forecasts. But firstly, a $29 million new civic precinct site in Torquay is being prepared for construction. Safety fencing has been erected before a site office is constructed. Bow and Water has started supply works in the area and environmental weeds are being removed. The first stage of the recreation facilities will include an AFL oval with designs for a synthetic soccer pitch, four competition standard netball courts and a multi-purpose pavilion. Close consultation with local clubs and groups has been undertaken to best meet the needs of locals now and into the future. Ian Nichols spoke with Torquay Mayor, Councillor Libby Coker. Look, it is really exciting, Ian. Look, behind us we have a crane working. In where these empty fields are, we will have recreational facilities for an extremely fast-growing community. We're going to have two AFL uh, standard football fields, we'll have four netball courts, we'll have some two soccer fields with synthetic cover. It's going to be fantastic as well as new civic precinct offices for, for our staff. Uh, we're going, we're getting underway, we have a new um, on-site uh, construction starting now, uh, offices for, for people to oversee the process. We also have Bow and Water who are putting in the pipes connecting us down from Geelong to North Torquay, which means that water is going to be coming down, which is going to service uh, the growing community of North Torquay. Eventually there will be 3,000 3, extra houses here uh, on the Civic Community Precinct. The first side's going to be turned on August the 2nd. I'm looking forward to uh, partnering that with uh, Darren Cheeseman, who is obviously a federal, federal member for Kerangamite, and the federal government have put in $4 million, which we are very grateful for. So as people come down the Surf Coast Highway, uh, they're going to see the fencing and hopefully what they will be seeing in coming weeks and months is uh, we have a certain design um, that looks like the Surf Coast and not a suburb of some other city. At the site of the new community and civic centre here at Torquay, this is Ian Nichols for News July. Thank you, Ian. A one-day event on Saturday the 13th of November will be held to raise funds and awareness for the homeless. The Walking Home Project will see participants walk from Queenscliff to Geelong and Andrea Cosa found out more from our councillor Andrew Katos and organisers. The recently launched Walking Home Project will raise funds and awareness for the homeless people of Geelong and will be held in November this year. Yeah, this uh, November 13th on a Saturday in Queenscliff We'll be walking for the Salvation Army for walking home to Geelong and Johnson's Park. Uh, the event is to raise awareness for the homeless in not only Geelong but the whole southwest region and hopefully we get all the community behind us for a fantastic day. And following the success of last year, how has the event changed? Last year the team walked from Warrnambool to Geelong so it was a five day walk and the response was fantastic from everyone in the community who wanted to be involved. So this year we've decided to go a one day event so we can get as many people, community, agencies involved in the walk and we hope to have uh, a thousand people or so join us. Once the, fa the funds have been raised, how will they be put back into the community and in particular the homeless people of Geelong? All the funds raised will go into a homeless shoe program which is where we get uh, shoes uh, supplied through Athletes Foot who would distribute vouchers out to all our agencies who then pass it on to the clients and then the clients go into Athletes Foot where they can purchase shoes. For those wanting to get involved, how should they contact? Uh, the best way to get involved is easy and with the technology it's uh, you go to our website which is www.walkinghome.org.au and just follow all the prompts. You'll see there's four options to join us from Queenscliff, Drysdale, Leopold or the showgrounds and as just follow the steps and register online. Well it's, it's a fantastic event and what it does it aims to raise money to buy shoes for the homeless. So there was $21,000 raised last year in the event for swags for the homeless. I think it purchased 50 slags from memory. 
and this year it's going to aim to buy shoes for the homeless. So it's a very, very worthy cause to be involved in. Looking forward to it? Yes. Will this be the first time you've done the walk? Yeah. Andrea Coza at Johnston Park for News Geelong. Thank you, Andrea. Sporting groups around the city of Greater Geelong have the opportunity to apply for grants to help with funding. Eliza Houghton spoke to our Mayor, Councillor John Mitchell, about the second stage of the lighting upgrade at Grinter Reserve. The City of Greater Geelong has just applied for state funding to go towards Geelong sporting precincts, as I talked to Mayor John Mitchell. Now the City of Greater Geelong has just applied for funding to the state government for sporting precincts around Geelong. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, well, there's an opportunity for us to uh, to put in for some grants, uh, you know, of up to $100,000 uh, for sporting pre some of the sporting pre precincts around Geelong, uh, like uh, for the relocation of the St Mary's Tennis Club and uh, things such as that. Um, and uh, we've uh, put it, lodged our applications, and uh, I think you'll find that uh, St Mary's Tennis Club. We've got the Moolap Tennis Club, which is uh, for a court upgrade. Uh, the Geelong Rangers Soccer Club for the Change Rooms Redevelopment, uh, Drysdale Football and Netball Club for a court extension. There's a number of different organisations that have been, uh, we're putting their name forward and we're supporting uh, and hopefully we will, uh, they will um, all bear fruit uh, with the state government. Can you tell us a bit about the lighting stage two that's just sort of been completed at Grinta Reserve? Yeah, well Grinta Reserve uh, is really a good news story. It's not only the lighting, the lighting, uh, we got a $20,000 grant from the uh, state government, we put $160,000 uh, towards new lights on the oval, but uh, along with that there's been a a, a grass conversion on the uh, on the main um, football ground, and uh, we also now recycle the uh, the water that we uh, get out of uh, the stormwater harvesting, <laughs> the stormwater harvesting, and we also recycle the water off um, splashdown uh, backfill. So we've built a built a, a wet area dam, which will uh, keep that uh, Grinta Reserve um, uh, drought drought free for the you know for its entire life, I suppose. So really, uh, been a new fence put around it, new walking track, BMX. Track's been done up, uh, opportunity for a soccer field there in the future. So Grinder Reserve's really a good news story for, for Geelong and for the, uh, the eastern suburbs. Eliza Houghton for News Geelong. Thank you, Eliza. This is News Geelong here on Channel 31 Analogue and Digital 44 as we go to a break and return with more news after this.